speakers, um, Joy Kondowski and Nancy Thorne from Chambers Construction here to talk about how and when to get a general contractor involved. Thank you. So I'm going to kind of give you the, the quick and dirty of what it means to work with a general contractor. Um, Nancy is here with me. She runs our small projects division. Um, a lot of times people think that general contractors, um, especially of our size, only do larger projects, but we do projects big and small. Uh, so we're going to jump right in. All right, so why would your business need a general contractor? There's a lot of different reasons depending on uh, what stage your business is in. If you are looking to build brand new from the ground up, uh, you're going to have some new construction, but maybe you like where you're at and you just want to expand or maybe rethink your space, um, or perhaps you are looking to move your business into another existing uh, facility. So we, we can work with expansion renovations. Um, but maybe you just need something small, like, you know, your space is maybe still looking like the 1970s and you'd like to look like the 19 or the 2020s, um, or, you know, just has some, some uh, day-to-day wear and tear that you just need to get fixed up. So general contractors can help with all of those things. So once you know what your project is gonna be, what do you want your project to be able to accomplish um, outside of the obvious business goals? Um, you know, you want to you meet your objectives there, but there might be other measures for success of your project. Maybe it's about um, how many local subcontractors you're involving in your project. Maybe um, sustainability is really important to you. Like, I'm going to build from the ground up, and I want you know I want to reach uh, LEED certification, which is a, a measure of sustainability of your building. Uh, I want to reach a certain lead certification or, you know, maybe it's really important to me that all the subcontractors that are on this job, um, you know, that we have a diverse workforce that's uh, on this. Maybe it's your schedule. Above everything else, I need to make sure this part of the school is done before the kids come back in the fall. Or I have new patients that are going to, I need to start seeing, you know, after the first of the year. So there's going to be different things that are important to you in your project and driving how you um, approach it. Um, what's important is that when you are in that stage thinking about what's important about your job, um, is bringing a general contractor at that point because they can really work with you about um, tailoring the project to meet those goals that are important to you. Um, and doing so can also help lead to some cost savings um, and an overall better outcome for your project. Um, it's better to be on the front end than the back end trying to do cleanup or fixing things that went sideways. So um, you also need to think about what, what do you want this process to look like? How do you want to work with a general contractor? Um, there are many different ways uh, to have that experience or what we call delivery methods. Uh, and these are the three most common. So you can do hard bid. Hard bid is, I just want to know what this project is going to cost. Um, I don't need, I know what I'm doing. I don't need somebody to help me um, think through the project. Um, and so you can go hard bid. Um, Lowest price wins. Um, there's really not a disclosure of the profit margin because this is the price we're going to build it for. Um, and even though it's low, low bid, um, it ultimately can be more expensive depending on what change orders your project might have uh, along with markups. Then you have what's called the CMGC method, or it's cost plus, uh, cost plus a fee. That's uh, where you have a construction manager slash general contractor on board for your project. Um, in that role, the general contractor is really more of a partner and an advocate for your project. So they're working with you through pre-construction. So before you even break ground or get things going, really working with you on selecting your subcontractors, working with you on the design of your project. Maybe they're working um, with the architect helping to tailor the design of the project to meet your budget, uh, your budget requirements. Um, and then also everything is open, uh, open book. So you see kind of everything that's going along with the project um, as it goes from start to finish. And then if you have a project that is just, it's something you need done, it's quick, it's fairly small, um, not super complicated, you can go to time and materials. Um, for all of, uh, for cost CMGC and for time and materials, you can set a cap, which we call a GMP, the guaranteed maximum price. So even though you don't have like, hey, at the end of the day, this is what my price is gonna be on the front end, like you would with a hard bid, you can still, understand what your costs are going to be. 
So just to kind of break down hard bid and CMGC because you might think, well, why wouldn't I want to go hard bid and go with what's going to be the lowest price? Well, there's pros and cons to it. So just this is kind of a, a quick and dirty side by side. So 80 to 90% of the cost of your project is going to be with your subcontractors. Now here locally, all the GCs that are going to quote your job are pretty much using the same subcontractors. So 80 90% is going to be the same and that are going to be used. Where, that, where you see differences is not remaining 10 to 20%. And those are how we're approaching what our general conditions are, um, insurance rates, um, the fee that we've assigned to the project. So that's where you're gonna see some differences. Now in terms of fees, um, they do vary depending on which method you go with. So if you're gonna go hard bid, and these are just ranges, that you can have projects that are higher, you can have some that are lower. Um, but with hard bid, typically you're gonna see fees that are between eight to 15%. And on the CMGC side, you're going to see typically between three to six percent. Now, as far as transparency, because a lot of owners want to know where their money is going in the project. With the hard bid process, you really don't get that transparency. But like I said earlier, with CMGC, it's an open open book process, and you have access to all of the documents, all of the bids, so you will know exactly where every dollar goes in the project. Um, change orders, because of the hard bid. Um, here they've given you one price up front. Um, typically, the change orders are going to come with a 10 to 15% markup. With the CMGC, because it is a cost plus fee, cost plus fee um, the percent that you're going to pay for markups is the same as your project fee. So it's going to be likewise somewhere in that 3 to 6% range. Um, at the end of the day, if the project was successful and there were some savings, if you go hard bid, the contractor gets to keep that savings as profit um, under the CNGC process, that those savings are returned to, back to you as the owner. So, kind of given that, it's like, well, why would somebody go hard bid? CMGC makes a lot more sense uh, in many respects. Um, if somebody knows what they're doing, they know what they, what they want, they have perfect, perfect plans, um, and they want it there, they just they know. Um, hard bid makes a lot of sense for people, but the norm of these days is going more to the CMGC route. So either way, you need to select that, that contractor to work on your project. So if you're going hard bid, you're gonna to need to solicit a bid. If you're going anything else, you're gonna to wanna to solicit a proposal. And those are two different things. Um, bids are focused on the price and um, to get a good price, you gotta make sure you have a good set of plans. Uh, a perfect set of plans does not exist. Um, even the very best person in their, in their job uh, makes mistakes, uh, leaves things out. Um, so your, your numbers depend on, on those plans. Um, and just because you get a low bid, typically that doesn't mean that's going to be your final cost because there will be changes. Um, with the other side of things, soliciting proposals, um, when you go this route, it allows the contractor to demonstrate to you that they understand your project and what's important to you. It gives them the opportunity to show some creativity, present new ideas, maybe things you hadn't thought about for your project. Um, and then the proposals will really focus on the people and the pro their process. How are they gonna build your project? Um, and then fees are also discussed, but they can be negotiated. So great, you've got your bids, you've got your proposals, now how are you gonna make the decisions, right? So finding the right fit really does matter. Um, just like no two restaurants are the same, or no two lawyers are the same, no two contractors are the same. We all have our, our areas of specialty. Um, but first and foremost, when you're dealing with your businesses, you need to make sure you're dealing with a commercial contractor, not a residential contractor. Just because they're licensed doesn't mean they're licensed to do your type of project. Um, but you wanna look at things like, have they completed similar work? Now, if you have a very niche project, the chances of them <laughs> having built your exact project before might not be readily available. But have they built something technical? Have they built something using the same types of uh, process or materials, um, the same size? So there's other ways that you can look at and compare similar projects. But you also want to look at things like what's their claim history? You know, do they try to work with their owners to um, find resolution to issues, or are they going straight to court? And there are contractors who do both. Um, what is their personnel experience? So just because a contractor has experience doing I say contractor is a contracting company. 
um, has experience doing your type of project doesn't mean the people that they're putting on your project have that experience. So you want to make sure they're putting the right team on, on your job. Do they have adequate insurance and bond? So for example, a general contractor might have a um, $100 million bond. But if they're tied up in three major projects, how much of that is actually available left in case something happens with your job? So you want to make sure they have the capacity from a financial standpoint to take on your project. Do they have recent relevant re uh, references? Um, will you have access to documents during the project? So you can review contracts, review the estimates, review um, change orders, different submittals. Um, what's their communication like with you? Are they, do they answer the phone when you call? Do they respond to your emails? Do they have regular meetings with you? These are all things that you want to see happening. And then when your project is done, will they offer you a warranty period? Um, buildings settle, things pop up. Um, no project is ever perfect the day that it's done. Um, and so how are they going to rectify those issues with you? And knowing that ahead of time is important. And then last but not least, do they share your values? Are they just building this project because it's just another, another thing they do and you're gonna move on to the next one afterwards and see in 20 years next time you need something? Or are they building a relationship with you? Are they, do they care about what the purpose of your project is about? So just things that you can think about. So once you have your contractor selected, there's other people who are gonna be involved in your project. Um, obviously yourself as the owner, um, and your general contractor, but chances are you're probably going to have an architect involved. Uh, you're probably going to have a lawyer and a banker, which are not on the slide, because they're going to be involved too. Um, now, some owners are savvy, they understand construction, and they can be their own construction manager, if you will. But if you're like me and like others, you're busy running your business. You may not have the technical background to understand if I make this selection over this selection, what the implications are. So a lot of times owners will hire a consultant um, to be their construction manager, or as we call them, their owner's rep. And so this is the person who can speak on your behalf and help make decisions to keep your project moving on time. And there's other people, depending on your job, that might come into play, like, for example, a civil or structural engineer. Um, you might need a landscape architect, depending on the site conditions of where your project is located. Utility companies, likewise. And then again, um, Permits are involved with construction, so we might need to bring in city or county for stuff. And then, of course, for every job, there's your uh, subcontractors and suppliers. Um, so you've got your team, you're ready to go. Just thinking about your project as a whole, there's some other things that you want to think about as you are in your planning stages. So the, the pandemic has created unprecedented um, constraints on supply and uh, of materials as well as labor. So things that used to take just a few weeks to get now take months to get. Um, one of our projects, they were expecting to get it, for example, an elevator, they were expecting to get it next month. Well, they just got told, oh, no, you're not gonna get it till October. So things are happening. So you wanna be um, cognizant of that as you are planning when you're gonna have this project completed. Um, you're gonna wanna think about your site location and zoning restrictions that might be in place. Um, if you are leasing your space, you know, what is your, um, what is the building owner allowing you to do or not do to that space? Permitting, and then I have on here occupied space. Um, are you going to still want to conduct business while this project is happening? Or do you share a space with maybe other tenants in the building? So how is your project going to impact them and, and having a plan for that as well? And then last but not least, kind of your long-term use and goal. It's great if you're like, hey, I, I just need to make this extension here because I know that next year I'm going to bring on this new client and I need to be able to have the capacity to handle them. But what's happening five years down the road, 10 years down the road, it's much more cost effective to build a little bit more now than to build a whole new thing five or 10 years down the road when you get to just add in a little bit more now. And then last but not least, um, just a couple of things that you want to think about with your general contractor. First and foremost, they need to be a partner and an advocate for you on your project um, because they're going to be the ones that are interfacing with all of the other folks on your team. Um, and as a general contractor, you should expect them to manage your project schedule and so that you meet all your milestones and stay on schedule, that they're coordinating your subcontractors and the estimates so that it's easy for you to keep track of where all the money is going. Um, they can work with your architect to drive the design to meet your budget targets, like I mentioned earlier. 
Um, they're going to oversee your job site, make sure that safety measures are being followed. They're going to make sure that the, the trades people on your job are doing quality work. They're going to follow up and make sure that work has been done correctly. So they're going to inspect it. Um, a good contractor should provide a warranty period on all of their work. And then most importantly, through everything, is maintaining open communication. So that's what you should be looking for when you're looking to hire a general contractor. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs>